Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, in this one I wanted to talk about what Hacktoberfest is and address some of the problems that have been coming up recently, uh, as well as my opinions on it. Uh, full disclaimer to get started, I am not associated in any way with Hacktoberfest or the sponsors such as DigitalOcean, and I am an open source maintainer. I maintain a bunch of Python projects in the Python community. Uh, that's a little redundant, but anyway. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's let's jump into it. So the first question that I wanted to address is what is Hacktoberfest? Uh, and this has kind of been a yearly tradition for several years. I want to say it started in like 2015. I could be wrong. It might have gone back earlier than that. Um, I've actually been participating in this since 2017. Uh, and I will talk about what it is. So the idea is uh, several tech sponsors have sponsored an event where they allow people to sign up for a mailing list and if those people sign up, signing up for the mailing list submit a certain number of pull requests, they will get a t-shirt. Uh, and the idea is to support open source by having people, you know, contribute to open source during October, which sounds great. And for the most part, I think this idea is an overall positive one. Um, you can see like you know, there's some pretty decent sponsors here. You get a cool t-shirt out of it if you complete it successfully. It often encourages people to try out open source for the first time when they haven't really worked on that. Um, I actually have a video in the description that talks a, a bit more about contributing to open source and you know, kind of gives you some advice in that space. Uh, but I think it's like, overall like a positive idea, which is, you know, get people excited about open source, contribute to open source. Um, and one unfortunate side effect of what's happened with this is it's become a little bit spammy. It, it, in reality, it's been spammy pretty much every year that I've seen it. Uh, but I, I think, you know, up until this year, it was a net positive on its impact. Like, yeah, there were some contributions that were made, you know, just to get the t-shirt and not really in earnest in supporting projects or, you know, actually furthering open source. Uh, but this year has been quite a bit different. And I wanted to talk about why things have been so different. And as far as I understand, it has come down to a single popular YouTuber who has posted a, tu a tutorial about how to spam repositories in order to win Hacktoberfest. Uh, I'll show you a bit of the video right here. Okay, what they're essentially showing here is uh, opening up a pull request, editing the readme to add awesome project to the title, then submitting it and creating this pull request against a project. And this is this is a completely spammy pull request and a, a great example of how to abuse the system to receive a t-shirt. And this is what's been plaguing maintainers and what has turned off a lot of people towards this project. Or, or sorry, to this, this thing, Hacktoberfest. Um, and this video has been, at the time, viewed almost 150,000 times, and quite a few people have, you know, taken this same procedure and applied it to a bunch of different repositories. Uh, one pattern that I've seen is people will search for repositories named website and, you know, make a pull request there. Improving the docs is what many of them uh, claim to do. I have one example here from a project that I maintain. Uh, this is from PyFlakes, which is a linter in uh, in Python. And you'll you'll notice that this individual opened a pull request that says improve docs. If you look at the changes to their pull request, you'll notice that they've done things that are inconsequential at best. Uh, you know, expanding a contraction, which, you know, I would argue that the left-hand side is just as clear as the right-hand side. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> changing a few words here. Overall, not an improvement to the documentation in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but this person is trying to, you know, game the system and get their t-shirt. And so this is, you know, just one example of what some of these pull requests look like. And the recommendation uh, to maintainers on how to, you know, combat this and disqualify the individual for this particular pull request, which I don't think scales, but it's something that you can do. Uh, and this is what this is what I've been doing with these um, particular projects is to uh, close first off close the pull request. This doesn't actually impact how the pull request is counted, but you know it's better for your project health to you know close the pull request, not continue discussions on things that are like this. Um, one thing that I've seen other maintainers do, which I didn't do here, which I would suggest is like put a small message that's like, hey, 
uh, you know, this is a place where real humans actually maintain this project. Your, you know, spammy pull request contributes to someone's free time being taken up by addressing this. And, you know, please don't do this. There's a good copy paste that's floating around on Twitter. I will link that copy paste in the description as well. Um, the next thing to do is to lock the pull request. This, you know, again, prevents people from continuing a discussion here. And the important part is to add the label invalid. And this will disqualify that pull request from Hacktoberfest. You can also add the label spam. I believe that one is also uh, going to disqualify that pull request. I've also gone ahead and reported the user on GitHub because I feel like, you know, <laughs> they're they're not taking the platform seriously. Like they're they're engaging in spammy behavior. The one downside to reporting it on GitHub is this creates more work for, you know, a support team at GitHub and <laughs> They, they work very hard at their jobs too, so I don't really want to burden them as well. Um, but that's that's kind of the problem. That's what's been happening this year, and it's it's been rampant. Uh, now I want to talk about my opinions on how I think Hacktoberfest could fix this and how their sponsors could make this a more productive um, situation. And I think the first part, and I think this is you know perhaps the most important point, is that uh the organizers could require that the pull requests become merged before counting them that would prevent you know you know spammy opening projects or opening prs on dead projects or projects that the maintainer just like ignores the pr forever um there is one downside to this in that if you make an earnest contribution during hacktoberfest and uh either the patch is not merged during the time where the project is somewhat inactive uh or it's a project where the uh, actual project doesn't use the GitHub merge workflow. Like for example, uh, I want to say like the Go project, for instance, like you'll make a pull request, they will merge it offline and close the pull request. Um, but I, I think like that could be worked around with like some special labeling by the maintainer to say like, yeah, this was actually merged and have that standardized and counted towards this thing. Um, I think another thing that would help this go a long way would be to have some sort of moderation by the sponsors themselves so like if a uh issue is marked as invalid or if a pr is marked as invalid or spam the maintainers of the project or sorry the the organizers of hacktoberfest could go through and ban that particular user and disqualify them from this give enough of a stick essentially to discourage this behavior um, but unfortunately, this is kind of a period of time where there's a bit of, you know, dread to be an open source maintainer. Another thing that you can do that's a little bit extreme is you can modify your repository to mark it as, you know, inactive. I'll give you an example in one of my projects. You can do this through the settings tab in your repository. So you go to settings and you can temporarily, where is it? Uh... Oh, maybe I don't have the particular feature enabled, but there is a way that you can limit to, uh, uh, nope, that's not it. Huh. Anyway, there is a way somewhere in the settings buried in, in here somewhere. I think it might be under interaction limits. Yeah, you can either limit contribution temporarily to existing users. This will make it so that people, you know, you, you won't gain new con contributors during this time period, but at least it will prevent the spam temporarily. Um, you can also, you know, temporarily disable your repository as a cooldown period. Um, but anyway, hopefully this was useful. Uh, thank you all for watching. I will hopefully see you guys in the next one.